The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Tell Us Why, a podcast for the financial freedom community. If you're looking to succeed in your quest for financial freedom, make sure you join us every week as we, along with our guests, discuss different stories of success, how they were achieved, and how you can do the same. And of course, we ask them to tell us why. Here are your hosts, Jack and Mike. Welcome to the Tell Us Why podcast. I am your host, Jack Darimple, here alongside my co-host, Mr. Michael Ketchum. Five I am back. I, yeah, I messed up already. Five seconds. But right. I am back, baby. Jack is back. Yes. Well, you excited? Every, the audience will be excited because, you know, Matthew Hitchcock, shout out, stepped in. and He can read? Everything read smoothly. That's so weird. everyone knew you were gone. People so. lo- love the mistakes. <laughs> At least my mom. My mom tells me she does anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah. And my wife. Makes you feel good. Makes me not feel. Well, we're lucky to have you back. Jack is back. <laughs> Which, speaking of that, Jack, I know usually we go back and forth, but I think I want to give you all this time. What is going on in the business? Because you got some exciting stuff. Ah, uh, yeah. So finally, finally done with all my refis. Oh my goodness! Throw so a party. Sitting on a decent amount of cash. So right if now. anyone needs a loan or has an <laughs> investing opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. So it's good. It's all done. It's been a been a grind all through the holiday season, but yeah, it is what it is. And I feel like I real estate man entered that flow state and was just in it, and now I'm done and uh, can get after it. I like it. I like it. Well, I got to tell you, I you know I get pretty excited most weeks. Today is a special week. I had the opportunity to connect with this guest before the show, I've and I think heard. I found someone who likes to talk I've as heard. much as I do. I've heard. So we were geeking out. <laughs> I mean, life was just good. We are bringing in I'm something. I'm going to leave now. So You're going to yeah, leave so you now? Just, you can just I'll chime see you guys in. at the end. I'll do the, so, the outro. <laughs> yeah. Essentially, we're, today we're talking about a different asset class, a different kind of entrepreneur, someone who's really getting after it, paving their way, a great inspiration to our audience. And I'm so excited to bring him in. I'm excited about um, it. And I think it's going to be a great episode. So definitely make sure you stick around. Make sure you check out the show notes for all the unbelievable resources we're going to drop. But before we do that, should we hear what this great episode is going to be brought to us by? Let's do Let's it. Let's do it. Are you sick of being treated like just another number by large insurance companies? Do you want a more personalized experience with somebody that you can trust? With Keith Monteith, that's exactly what you'll get. Keith is an experienced professional who can design an insurance plan tailored to fit your specific needs. With access to over 30 insurance carriers, Keith is able to shop numerous markets to find a price that works for you. So if you want an insurance agent that you can rely on and one that has your best interest at heart, then call or text Keith today on 978-241-2363. That's 978-241-2363. Keith Monty. He'll get you covered. Okay, so today we are talking to Dave Laundromat Millionaire Men's. He's a passionate entrepreneur, husband, and dad from Cincinnati, Ohio. He's the owner of Queen City Laundromat Chain and Laundromat's the author of The Laundromat Millionaire. Mm-hmm. Author, cool, like that. <laughs> um, what makes Dave uni- unique is the path he took to achieve his success, from poverty to a corporate career to taking the plunge into business and turning a struggling laundromat that he bought off Craigslist. Interesting, awesome. I want to hear about that. Uh, into a cash-flowing multi-million dollar asset. Dave's journey was anything but typical. Having fine-tuned his operations over a decade, surrounded by his rock star team, Dave is obsessively driven to help teach and inspire others while elevating the laundromat industry to a whole new level through network, networking, service, and collaboration. That's pretty good I for you. I did all right. That right? was pretty good. Was Dave, thank you for being here. Dave, I can't hey. read. I'm sorry. Yes, it's, it's an no, ongoing no. joke. <laughs> the audience expects it at this point. So. I don't even know. Why do I do this? <laughs> I it's quite a mouthful. It's quite a mouthful. I get it. So. Well, yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. This is going to be good. No, yeah, we're, looking forward to it. Like I said, we're, we're excited. And uh, you know, really what we're bringing and building here is a community. It's a community of proven entrepreneurs, inspiring entrepreneurs, business people, those seeking uh, to create wealth and live life on their terms. And you have a very unique story. You've got proof of concept, and uh, we're just excited to get you going. So looking at it through that lens, why don't you tell everybody where you're at in your businesses today? Because I know you got a lot going on. Yeah, where we are today is a pretty beautiful place, to be honest with you. I'm not a fan of what I call comfortable complacency, uh, but I am very content, uh, yep. but I'm still very driven as well. 
as you mentioned, I'm married. I have a beautiful wife and children. I have a wonderful life. I have all the flexibility in the world and I'm living my dream, which is a full-time entrepreneur. Um, I get up every day and I have the flexibility to do whatever I want to do. Um, that, that doesn't mean that I'm going to do nothing because I'm not really capable of that. Uh, but I get to, for the most part, choose what I'm going to do each day. And uh, that's a pretty, there's a lot of freedom associated with that. Um, so now I spend a lot of my time teaching, coaching, mentoring, you know, writing books, creating e-courses uh, to try to try to help other people. I'm very grateful for where I am in life. I'm very appreciative. And the old cliche, pay it forward. Um, I think we need more people like you and I doing what you and I are doing in this world. I don't think we can have too many of us. So I'm just trying to play my part. That's it. I, I think you're exceeding at your part. I love hearing that right out the gate. Yeah. Like, I love that when people are passionate about it and well, have created the lifestyle design and then they're giving back. It, it's everything we talk about, right? It's the exactly. mindset shift. Exactly. And I mean, I'm, I'm going to jump right into it because as usual, I, I go off the rail from the show notes. So <laughs> you just, you just threw a lot at Glad us. I right wasted there. my time. Yeah. Here we so, go. <laughs> staying with that though. Obviously, that's where you're at today. You put a lot of work to get in there. To go and take on that risk and to, to go back to the beginning, what was your why? What carried you forward to get to this end point? What was the vision? What was the, you know, bring us back to the beginning. What, what did that look like, you know, a decade or so ago? Yeah. My why is, uh, in a very simple term, is my family. But I know that's pretty easy for most of us to usually say. Love it. What I really mean by that is when you grow up really poor, and it's not just financially. I grew up in a pretty rough environment in mm -hmm. Flint, Michigan which is now kind of known for the water crisis. But a lot of people don't realize, like when you think of like Michigan and, uh, you know, rough areas and the ghetto and stuff like that, most people think of Detroit. Mm -hmm. Flint, Michigan actually has a higher crime rate than Detroit. But oh, most wow. people haven't heard of Flint, Michigan before the water crisis. But the point is, I grew up really poor to parents that uh, had my older brother, um, their senior year of high school. And I was born a couple of years later. So by the age of 19, they had two babies, oh, wow. no education and didn't know what to do uh, with themselves. And credit to my parents, they're grinders. They've worked hard. They created a, a nice middle-class life for themselves. Um, but, you know, my upbringing was the beginning of that journey. Uh, and I learned a lot of life lessons from that. But what it boils down to is um, what my why is pretty simple. My why is my family. Um, and now that I know that my family will never know or understand what I went through as a young child, which was why my first why, if you will, uh, now my why is giving back to others. Um, I call him the 10 year old Dave Menz. Um, I grew up in a household that uh, very loving, very encouraging, but uh, when you grow up in poverty, you, you don't, not intentionally, but you're not really allowed to dream. And what I mean, like that sounds terrible. What I mean by that is like, you're just trying to get by, you're just trying to get mm -hmm. out of poverty. If you can get the lower middle class, you have, a, you have succeeded in life. And so you're not really allowed, and a lot of times don't allow yourself to think anything beyond that of what could my life be. Mm -hmm. And I don't, want my, I don't want my children, I don't want my family to ever know the things I went through. I don't want them to ever experience them. And now I'm to a point where I want to find the 10-year-old Dave Menz. And by the way, they're not always kids. Sometimes they're 70 years old yep. and still trying to chase their fulfillment in life. And uh, if that's a, you know, I can't help everybody, but I feel like I can help some entrepreneurs uh, just through my journey and my story and my book and things like that. And so that's my why now. I mean, I certainly have more than one. <laughs> I, I, I think that's a, a, a great segue. And, and honestly, as you know, I can relate. I, I grew up similar. And, you know, the day we talked on the phone, I think I told you the story to your point. I remember driving around the town I grew up in and my world was so small and you hit the nail on the head. I've actually never heard anyone explain it as good as you did. You did a lot better than I did where <laughs> we don't know what's outside of our world when you're in that environment. I remember thinking the bigger houses near me were like, that's it. Like I've made it in life. And then fortunately, you know, the grit, the passion, everything you talked about has carried us forward. And the same thing we do in Tell Us Why is exactly what you just hit on is that you want everyone to get exposure, to bet on themselves, to try to get the best for them. So I think what you just said, that 10-year-old that Dave Mintz, I mean, that, that's perfect. That's yeah, exactly absolutely. what we're trying to encapsulate and, and, and go with. You know what I mean? So thank you for sharing that. I, I think that's yeah. spot on. Um, I think it's important. And if it's okay, I'll throw one last thing Absolutely. In there. I don't always just want to promote the, the beautifulness 
I don't. I just made that word up. I think. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't want to just promote what I call the Hollywood version of being an entrepreneur. Like you know, my title, my book, and my brand is Laundromat Millionaire. That's definitely kind of braggadocious and all these things. Just a way to get people's attention. It's my brand and, and what I do isn't about me at all. It's just about getting your attention. And once I get your attention, then you can hear what I have to say and how it will help you. Uh, but but something I really try to be very authentic about. I think because it's uh, pretty burned into my psyche is, is the negative. Like it's hard, Like mm. this isn't easy. This isn't Hollywood movie. Like everybody's driving around Lamborghinis because they launched a website. Like that's not, <laughs> that's not what this is. That's what you see and on I TV. Fe- I feel like works, so right? many people yeah. promote entrepreneurship. You know, it, it, I, the funny thing is I remember when I was a kid, I'm 45 When I was a kid. Entrepreneurship was not sexy. Like it wasn't cool. There was nothing cool about it. I don't know why nowadays it's like the coolest thing ever. Um, and so I'm not trying to discourage anybody, but I feel like we, we as a society um, promote entrepreneurship as something that it's not, um, maybe not intentionally, but we do it. And so what happens is we attract people into entrepreneurship that are chasing something that isn't even real. Oh yeah. That's yeah. my point. Yeah. So what I've tried to do in my book and my podcast and all the things that I do is to show what I call the good, bad, and the ugly. And I know that's cliche in its own right, but I think they, I think people, if they're going to chase entrepreneurship, they need to know the real story. And the funny thing about that is it's not easy to sell that. Like people really want to buy the Lamborghinis and the millionaire yep. stuff. They don't really want to hear that other stuff, but they need to hear that other stuff. Yep. And so I'm really passionate about, you know, telling people what they need to hear versus what they want to hear. Um, and if I get 10% of the audience that I would have gotten otherwise, that's okay. Because that's really what the 10 year old defense is all about. Yeah, you're gonna make an impact with that ten percent as opposed to yeah. having nine oh, yeah. percent just listen because it's oh it's great like they see it on Instagram. It's like I feel like, I feel like it's the in- Instagram lifestyle, the Instagram <laughs> right. entrepreneurship exactly. lifestyle. Like they see whatever billionaire mindset or something like yeah. that where somebody's driving Lambos and they sold the business and turned it into a ten million dollar profit in two years. Like Wait. yeah, it's great. Sure, it happens once in a while, but I guarantee you, about ninety percent of the people out there. That didn't actually happen. They stole those pictures right. off of the internet and <laughs> posted them, and yeah. or they're going to the uh, the uh, airplane studio where you see that oh, in LA God, where they have the right. fake, the fake right. jet studio exactly. and people right. taking pictures. Oh, well, he, he just exactly. he just nailed it, right? And what we talk about on here is, unfortunately, as a society, and I think we're trying to change it, and, and some will get it, some won't. It goes back to that where we talk about exposure. I feel we got to level the playing field and expose everybody, and then you get the results that you put in. But we're so obsessed with results and not process. And every successful person that I found, what it really boils down to is once you get into the mud, once you get into the process and you can refine it and fine tune that and survive that and go through it, success is usually on the other side of it. Mm -hmm. And that instant gratification is what they're trying to sell because it's clickbait, right? It's clicky. So you've mentioned the book a couple of times. I think that's a a perfect way to segue into that. Mm -hmm. Talk about the book. What is the name of the book? How does that tie into what we're talking (laughs) about here with the good, the bad, and the ugly? Yeah, the book is called Loner Matt Millionaire. That's the title. Um, obviously, that's catchy. Hopefully, it will get people's attention, as I mentioned. Um, but I stumbled upon that. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, man, this guy goes around calling himself the Loner Matt Millionaire. <laughs> egomaniac, right? Uh, which I get it. I just kind of accept that for what it is. I'm like, hey, if I were in your shoes, I'd probably think the same thing. Um, but what happened is I was on the Bigger Pockets podcast a couple of years ago, which is a pretty big podcast. Yeah. And uh, I totally stumbled onto this, told my life story. This was before I was doing a lot of the stuff I'm doing now. Long story short, I was an hour, hour episode, and I told my whole life story on there pretty, pretty authentically, which I try to do. And for the next, well, quite frankly, I still get messages to this day from that episode. But for the next year, at least, I got hundreds of messages a week wow. um, from people, emails, messages through my website, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, just everywhere. I mean, platforms I didn't even know existed. I mean, messages and stuff. And I just thought, man, I'm onto something here. But what happened is I told this story and I didn't have a book or anything yet. And as I'm telling the story, the conclusion to the story at the end is that I'm now a multimillionaire and I try to be authentic. So I just like said it, not really thinking about it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy reached out to me in one of these thousands of messages and he sent me an email. He said, Hey, you're that laundromat millionaire guy, right? And I was just like, Hmm. I'm a laundromat millionaire. And my wife, who's a very private person, she was just mortified. And at the time I was already doing like some coaching in the industry. And really my heart was really towards wanting to like give back and stuff. And so I was already kind of in that place, that mindset. 
And I already had my book written. I just didn't know the title of it. And it was just a really weird dichotomy of things coming together. And I was like, you know what? That's the name of my book. And my wife was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it is. So anyway, that's how I got the title of the book. The, the headline for the book is The Grit to Elevate an Industry. And I've always wow. told, told people, you know, I'm not really the smartest. I'm certainly not the most educated. Definitely not the good, best looking. Um, but what I do have going for me is the only way you'll get me down is you got to kill me. That's yep. it. That's the only way I'm going to stop coming. Um, and so I just call that good old fashioned grit, right? Um, and so one of the things about the laundromat industry that makes my story really interesting is when people say the word laundromat, there's a very negative connotation associated with it. Mm-hmm. And rightfully so. Most of the laundromats in the country are in a terrible state of disrepair. That's the opportunity that I've taken advantage of to literally change my family tree is I acquired these locations, fixed them up, made them really nice, evolved, networked, focused on my knowledge and education, really got to know uh, mentors and friends in the industry that operate at what I call the top of the industry, which is the very nice, well-run, fully staffed, uh, outstanding customer service, amazing facilities, the top of our industry. And so essentially what happened is this, this book is written in a way where I call it a teaching memoir. So it's a memoir, meaning it's about my life. It is my life story, but it's not just meant to entertain you. It's meant to teach you. But I wrote this book seven times. Uh, It took me seven years to write this book, same book. Wow. And the story is the same, but I just tweaked this and I tweaked that and I turned to this and everything was true in every version of the book. But I always was trying to come to a place of what's the point? Like, what's the point? Because this isn't about me. And so what I ultimately came up with, the version that we have out now that I ended up signing a publishing deal um, with a New York publisher, which was, I fully thought I would self-publish the book. And it's just kind of taken on a life of its own as this. I believe that 80 to 90% of business is transferable from industry to industry. So if you're in real estate or you own Taco Bell franchises, what makes you successful, 80 to 90% of that is going to make you successful in other industries. And I, and I believe we have a lot to learn from each other. So you guys may or may not own laundromats and you may or may not ever want to own a laundromat. That's okay. That means 10 to 20% of what I'm going to say in my book doesn't apply to you. But the other 80% is full of what I call golden nuggets. And the reason that I wrote the book in that context is because the book isn't about laundromats. The book is about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, capitalism in its purest form is about servitude. It's about finding a problem, solving the problem, serving people, serving your community. And when you do those things at a high level, which most people do not in the business world, people will just throw their wallets at you because they are so grateful for what you've done in their life. That is business. That's what I fell in love with as a five-year-old kid was the idea that I could do that and make money. And so that's the context of my book. That's how I wrote my book. That's what I hope people get out of my book. And there's certainly a lot to unpack in there, but that's the context. It's not about laundromats and it's not about me. It just happens to be my story, if that makes sense. Makes tons of sense. Tons of sense. I I like that a lot. Yeah. And and what do we talk about all the time? And Dave, it sounds like you're on the same note, regardless of industry. You know, that's one thing we tell us why we're not just real estate. How often do the same themes interweave across industries and Dave just hit the nail on the head. If you go back and re-listen to that part of the episode, we've talked about it. It sounds so counterintuitive, but when you stop chasing money, Mm -hmm. money comes at you faster at a velocity and you try to explain this to people and it's like until they experience it themselves, they will not believe you, but it's shifting that mindset from what can I extract from value to what value can I add in every conversation How am I solving a problem? How am I making every, how am I picking everyone up around me? You know, I think people think entrepreneurship and business is this secret sauce, the secret ingredient, when in reality, you, you get on me all the time, but you know, open book, share. I mean, Dave, you, you touched on coaching, and again, I'm going to put you on the spot from our conversation. Mm-hmm. I want Dave to tell his story about coaching, because th- there's so many things in here to unpack for this community, because coaching is one of these buzzwords, right? Coaching is very controversial. Every person who I've met, again, ultra successful, has been involved in coaching in some form of capacity. The people who need the coaching the most are usually the people who say it's a scam and a gimmick and they won't pay for it. And they're right. To them, where they're at in their life, it would be because they're not mentally ready for it. Can you share with us your coaching experience a little bit as well, Dave? 
Yeah. So, so I stumbled into coaching people just by being a heart of having a heart of someone that just wants to serve others. Once again, that's, that's how I was raised. That's my mm-hmm. faith. That's my upbringing. Cause I was just raised. That's what we're here to do. Um, yeah, we got to make money, take care of our family, but we're here to serve each other. That's how I was raised. And so I've always looked for opportunities to do that. And part of the way through my journey in the laundromat business and part of the way through this book and my story, um, I, I evolved, it seemed like almost overnight from what I call a newbie, meaning the guy that was obsessed with asking questions and getting answers yeah. to guy that all of a sudden had a lot of the answers. Um, and this is a 12 year journey. So it was kind of somewhere in the middle, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, all this networking that I had done with people online, in person, at conferences, events, different trade shows, all of a sudden these people started coming to me and they were like, how did you do what you did? And I was like, wait a second, they want, like, <laughs> I'm supposed to be asking the questions here and they want to learn from me. And then I realized one day, well, well, geez, I've been doing this for six or seven years. I guess I have a little something to give back. And so my attitude was always pretty simple. It was like, you know, if I have something to, that can help you be successful, why would I withhold that from you? And so I would just, hey, if you want to call me, call me. Sure. Here's my phone number, which is what I did on Bigger Pockets, which is how I got blown up. <laughs> uh, gave up, gave out my email. Uh, but anyway. So what ended up happening is long story short, I, I ended up creating a coaching business without meaning to, and I wasn't charging. It was free. I did this for probably three years in my industry. And uh, if you want to, if you want to have a booming business, start a free coaching business where you know what you're talking about and people get results because that, that'll, that'll come back to you full circle. It blew up to the point where I was doing this almost full time and I loved it, but it was also exhausting, but I was answering the same 20 to 30 questions over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed helping people, but I was like, all right, I got to do something different here. Talking to one of my mentors one day, I was like, I'm whipped. Like I'm exhausted, but I want to help people. He said, you got to start charging. I was like, I don't, I don't need the money. Like, I don't want to charge. He's like, no, 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 you have to, because you're starting to have people become entitled. They feel that they have a right to your time and your time is valuable. And so he walked me through this process. I said, all right, well, I guess I need to start doing that as much as I don't really feel comfortable. I said, I'm a, I think I'm going to start some outrageous amount. And he was like, good. I think you should. I think you deserve it. I was like, all right, hundred dollars an hour. And he was like, are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. He was like, no, 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 no. Like you need to charge at least double that. And I was like, I barely graduated from high school. You only charge $200 an hour? Like, that's what I pay my attorney. Are you crazy? So we had this conversation over weeks. What it boils down to is he convinced me to charge $250 an hour. And my uh, coaching business that had been free, and I said, all right, starting immediately on charging, it just blew up even more. I thought, what in the world is happening here? Because I was trying to solve a problem and I created a new one. <laughs> Long story short, I ended up going probably six months doing that. And I eventually doubled my rates to $500 an hour. And every client that I worked with was just overwhelmed with um, their results, I guess is how we would put it. They were, they were very grateful that I helped them a lot. I mean, I probably saved them in most cases, tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in mistakes along the way. And I knew that. Um, and so they were very grateful. And so I said, man, I'm onto something here. What it boiled down to is I'm a macro thinker. I'm a big picture guy. And I don't like limitations. The reason I didn't like working in corporate America is because I always felt like a cage lion. I need that freedom to just chase whatever dog I'm hunting that day. Yep. Whatever, wherever I want to go, I need the freedom to do that. And I always say I reserve my the, I reserve the right to pivot and change my mind anytime I want based on new information that comes in. And so what ended up happening, this business blew up. I was making all kinds of money doing something that I wasn't really enjoying doing, but I really felt like I was just helping one person at a time. And every time I'd get off an hour call with somebody, I'd be like, you know, it feels really good that I helped them avoid mistakes, but I couldn't help but think that's an hour of my life. I'll never get back. And I only helped one person. And that just wasn't good enough for me. And so that's when kind of the book and the podcast, and I've started creating e-courses um, that are going to be launching soon. And I'm, I actually, we're holding our first laundromat millionaire conference, which is a, um, in-person 200 person conference at the W hotel in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It's kind of like a high, high end, uh, conference, uh, primarily for laundromat owners to elevate their businesses to another level. But really what I did is I pivoted away from helping people individually. And I've been trying to help people in groups, 
because that moves the needle more. I've also tried to create evergreen products Mm -hmm. uh, like my book, like my podcast, my course. I love, and it's not a monetary thing. Everybody goes to the money. I love the fact that hypothetically, every person on earth could be reading my book at the same time. Like I have no limitations Mm -hmm. and I've created it. I put in all this work and all this money, which was a lot, but once it's done, it can help people forever and ever. Amen. Hypothetically, of course, I'm not under any illusion. I'm going to be a best-selling author or anything (laughs) like that. But the fact of the matter is that's where I've kind of pivoted from where I was to where I am nowadays. And it seems like every time I do something like write a book, people seem to respond to it. They seem to be inspired by it. Uh, They learn from it. They're grateful. And that makes me feel really good. That is, um, you know, I tell people all the time, we hear over and over again, it seems they've kind of become really popular right now to be like, oh, just do what makes you happy. Everybody says, right, just do what makes you happy. (laughs) Like, you know, I don't really buy that crap, to be honest with you. I mean, I want to be happy. I want you to be happy. But there are things that I could hypothetically do that would make me happy in the moment that aren't good for me. And they're, they're destructive, quite frankly, to society, to yep. myself. And so I don't know that I really buy that. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of trying to flip the script and I'm saying, do what you're passionate about and do what brings you fulfillment. Because those are the things that I've done, not on purpose. I wasn't that smart. It was kind of by accident <laughs> that, that have really, really made me fulfilled. And what I found is I look back on these paths of the things I've accomplished and still I'm trying to do. And I'm like, you know, there was a lot of days I wasn't happy doing that. Like that was hard work. It was stressful. It was expensive. It was risky. It was all the things that us entrepreneurs are and strive to be every day. But man, was it fulfilling. And And what I want to do at the end of my life is I want to get to the end of my life and I want to look back on my life and have no regrets. That's it. That's all I want. I want to look back and be like, you know what? If I ever had a desire to write a book, um, I wrote that book. Maybe oh. no one on earth bought it, but I wrote that book. <laughs> that sense of fulfillment again. Yeah. 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 And wow, there's, there's a lot to unpack there. And, and I, I really wanted you to share that story. So thank you. Because what I was telling you off air about, the reason I was so excited about this, that just took everything that we've talked about. But beginning of this conversation, the social media element completely flipped it on its head. You go to most people and you say, I'm going to charge $100, $200, $500 an hour. People don't put enough uh, uh, emphasis on their own ROI, their own time. You came at it from, I'm a helping, I'm a problem-solving mindset for free. Tell me if this sounds familiar. And then (laughs) people keep calling you and it's going up. And then you can't charge enough because it wasn't your intention to get to that point. So then you go further Now you start getting these passive streams that, again, not chasing the money, but you are taking the risk. Well, guess what? By taking the risk and having the right mindset, you are reaping the rewards. That goes back, again, to the process, not the result. The result is multiple streams of income, the laundromat millionaire, the branding. The process he took to get there, we can all do. But again, it was putting in the work. It was having the grid. It was pushing through the problems. Not I show up and I'm at the end here and here's a pot of gold add value, come from that place of fulfillment, that place of servitude, and the dollars will come at you. Yeah, I mean, I was really, I've never heard someone express it like that. Like the reason to going to e-courses and book, writing books and things like that is because of the, you can only serve one person at a time when you essentially scale and systematize your business by creating these things, you're able to have more of an impact and help more people. I've never heard it expressed that way. And I guess it's just commendable. I, well, if I could say one more thing too, guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dissect this a little bit down to yep. just the e-course. So I spent probably nine months writing the script for my e-course. We've spent a lot of money professionally in a studio, flew from Cincinnati out to San Francisco to record this, have it professionally edited, did this all the right way. My goal with the e-course was really simple. I felt guilty charging people $500 an hour to talk to me on the phone. I, I did. I just felt yeah. guilty. I was like, yeah. this is like ridiculous. But I love the fact that they were happy. They, got a, they felt like they got a tremendous value. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, there's something here that I don't want to not do or stop doing, but I still feel guilty charging people $500 an hour. And I also hated the fact that I, was limita- I had limitations. And so my thing with the e-course was really simple. I said, if I create this e-course and it comes out in a couple of weeks, 
well, if I create this e-course, you know, it's a kind of a master class on how to get into the industry the right way is kind of the, the idea behind it. I create this course, spend a lot of time, a lot of money on it. We're going to probably charge about a thousand dollars for this course. And the thing that I love about that is that I am 100% confident that whoever pays a thousand dollars for that course is getting at a bare minimum 50 to a hundred thousand dollars in value. Now they may not go and do anything with that. That's on them, right? Yep. Their actions. That they got to take action. Yep. Um, but I feel really good about that. So I went from provide, what I was really focused on doing is providing more value. They were already happy with the value I was providing, but I wasn't happy with it. I didn't feel comfortable with that. I wanted to find a way to provide more value. And isn't that business like going back to what I said a minute ago, you could own a Taco Bell franchise or a dry cleaner or a car wash or whatever. And if you're always what I call obsessively focused on providing more value than your, than your customers, let's call them that are paying for, I mean, you're going straight to the moon. That's all there is to it. And you're going to impact people's lives. And that's what I want to do. Very well said. The little, the little e-course is just an example of that, but hopefully the lessons people pull out of that is just always look to serve people and never stop trying to give them more value in exchange for less money. And if you do that, I mean, sometimes it's a little bit different animal. Like I had to learn a whole new industry to learn how to do e-courses. And now I'm learning how to market them and how to create funnels and all these crazy things that I don't really even want to learn to do. Um, But that's what I need to do to serve all these people that I, that I want to serve. And, and most of them are people I don't even know who they are. Yeah. Well, I think on that note, the last question before we move on to the big three um, is what book or resource would you recommend to our listeners? Is that e-course up and available right now? <laughs> um, it's not note. yet. A couple uh, of it weeks will said, be. Right? I'm yeah. not sure when this will come out, but we're in the middle of July or uh, middle of January, 2022. It'll be out in early February. So in a couple oh, of weeks, nice. it's, it's finished. It's a couple last little tweaks is all. If, if yeah, if you um, get that to us, we'll definitely link it in the show notes. Cause that'll be, that'll be great yeah. to, to share with the audience. Thank you. I appreciate sure. that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. The book you mentioned. So the book <laughs> I've mentioned more than once that I've kind of an obsessive personality and I do uh, a friend of mine referred me to this YouTube channel, excuse me, by this guy named Alex Hermosi. Um, and I don't know how this guy doesn't have a hundred million subscribers because mm-hmm. he's just unbelievable. But a friend of mine was, who's like-minded, he's in the laundromat business. He was like, you got to check this guy out. He's changing my life. I was like, whoa, changing your life. That's a big statement. Um, long story short, he wrote this book. It's called $100 Million Offers, oh, which okay. also just sounds very like braggadocious, right? Uh, kind of like pie in the sky type stuff. And uh, long story short, I don't read books anymore. I listen to them on Audible, which I know most of us do. Um, I listened to that book three times in a row without oh. ever, quote unquote, putting it down. Wow. Um, it, it blew, it just blew my mind. The guy's, the guy's amazing. And the funny thing is, I'm going to keep bringing it back to this. It's okay. The funny thing is he started by owning his own gyms oh, and wow. he, he's, he's passionate about fitness. And um, the guy found a way to kind of crack the code to be, more, you know, the gym industry is not known for being super lucrative. Yeah, uh, Owning gyms is not really a way to get rich. Most people will tell you that he found a way to do really well through gyms. But what he did is he said, you know what? by running gyms and, and allowing people to thrive locally, I'm only serving a few hundred people, or I'm sorry, a few thousand people. I think at one point he had six gyms and he was like, if I sell all those gyms and I spend all of my time teaching gym owners all over the country, how to make their gyms thrive, then I can move the needle on my industry more than owning a few gyms myself. And now he's kind of superseded the gym industry. And now he's just known as an entrepreneur uh, you know, because all of those lessons um, are transferable from industry to industry. So I always say like, he's, he's certainly a lot smarter than me, a lot more successful than me, but he's like where who, he's who I want to be in like 10 years or five years or maybe next week. Would well, be okay. I think I want to be Dave Mems <laughs> next is who I want to be. So anyway, so, very good one book. more time. Yo, what was the name again? Can we get that one more time? Cause I hadn't heard that uh, one. Yeah. It's called hundred million dollar offers. Um, and the, offers. the, that's, that's that's the name of the book, but it actually says like a hundred capital M, and then offers is wow. like okay. the name of the book. They don't check that one out. Yeah. That that sounds like a lot of great stuff to unpack. I mean, three it's, times in a row. I'm an Audible fan unreal. myself. I know Jack is <laughs> read and go through, it, and there's always Very so many good. things that are unpacked. Let me ask you. I'm gonna I'm gonna 
tack one little extra question on that before we transition. Yep. I'm screwing Jack's show notes Uh-oh. up again. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, be, well, because he said something that I, that I really want to get into. Do you think, and I'm putting you on the spot here, that book was so impactful because of where you're at in your journey right now? No doubt. Do you think you were ready to hear it? No doubt. And I would not have been able to, what's the word? Appreciate process maybe um that book even a few years ago no doubt about it um and so you know that's the reason that i believe that we should all do what we do podcasts books magazines blogs video youtube whatever do you do you you do what calls you right now and you're probably if you're if you're always focused on serving others you're probably going to find other places and ways you can do that um because the funny thing is like this guy's story, he's in the fitness industry, but this guy's story is actually very similar to mine, just in a different industry. And if, if people, if people hear one thing that comes out of my mouth in my life, it's that I learn much more about being successful in the laundromat industry from people outside the industry. I have friends that are very successful entrepreneurs in the, in the uh, restaurant field. And I, they're local in Cincinnati. I have a lunch with them on a regular basis. We text each other. We do stuff like this. And they have no idea. But we would have lunch. And these are very smart people. We have lunch. And I would have problems in my business. And I would ask them questions related to their business. Because the restaurant business is known for being like super slim margins, right? Mm-hmm. Like you, you run a restaurant and be really, really, really successful and profitable there aren't too many businesses that are harder to run than that and keep your margins in line and your waist down and things like that. So my point is they basically helped me be successful in the laundromat industry. The reason that's important is some industries and mine was one of them, that information and that knowledge and that education doesn't exist in your industry. And so if you only stay in this echo chamber of everyone saying the same thing, And you don't ever go outside your industry and try to find actionable, practical tips and tricks on how to be successful as an entrepreneur, put the product to the side, then you're missing out on an awful lot of growth and education. And Alex, who I've never met, um, is is an example of that. He's just from another industry. I'm an example of that. You can find other people out there that are really well-known that started in this industry or this industry or this industry, and now they don't even really talk about gyms anymore so much they're just talking about business and entrepreneurship because all those lessons apply and the point is that alex's book and his youtube channel has helped me tremendously to be a better laundromat owner what was alex's last name i'm sorry what was his last name uh hormozy i think it's like i think it's like alex in my phone that i know owned a bunch of gyms and i haven't talked to him in like four (laughs) or five years i was like wait a minute Oh, that's nice. like, really? He yeah, was talking about selling like them at one point. I was like, wait. M-O-Z-I or something like okay. that. Okay, all right. Um, not the same crazy guy. thing is you pull him up on YouTube. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is much more than my YouTube channel. But if you pull him up on YouTube, I mean, he's got like 100,000 subscribers, which, I mean, is a lot. Don't get me wrong. I've got like 1,500. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, at the same time, like like you, you watch a few of the guy's videos, read his book, you'll be like, how is this guy not freaking Tony Robbins? Like, it's unbelievable. <laughs> well, you, you just, He's really sharp. You hit the nail on the head. And that's the reason I asked that question is when I'm, when I'm waking up more to, we, we have an episode coming out we recorded with, again, one of my favorite entrepreneurs, uh, Dave Garofalo. It's dropping, I think, this week, actually. And um, as you mentioned, January Which 2022. Is three weeks ago. And uh, yeah, again, every <laughs> people green. listening to this now. Well, <laughs> the reason I bring that up, though, is cigar industry and all the themes are exactly the same to the laundromat, to our real estate. I come from an education background. I wholeheartedly believe the reason we are crushing it in real estate is because I used to have to run the school using the yep. same skills. So yep. yeah, like I said, go, going with that, 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 that is great. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad we dived into that. But as Jack mentioned, Dave, I hope you're ready. We're about to hit you with the hard ones that we ask every guest every week. All so right, uh, before we transition to the big three, should we hear what's brought to us by? Absolutely. Well, let's do it. It's now time for the Big Three segment, brought to you by QS Private Lending. Are you looking to finance your next deal quickly and reliably with less hassle and paperwork? QS Private Lending is one of the oldest and largest hard money lenders to real estate investors in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. Our quick and simple short-term loans require no appraisals and have enabled hundreds of builders and investors to profitably acquire and renovate thousands of residential and commercial properties. To experience the QS difference for yourself, call or text Luke Conroy today at 315-323-0250. That's 315-323-0250. QS Private Lending. 
All right, and it's time for the big three. These are the three questions we ask every guest every week, and I'll kick it off with a college question. So in your opinion, <laughs> is college worth it? You know, I don't like absolutes. Um, I try not to speak in absolutes whenever I, whenever I can avoid it. Uh, for me, no way. Absolutely not. Complete and utter waste of time. Didn't graduate. Never should have went. Um, I do believe that for some people, it's important. Like I wouldn't want a heart surgeon doing surgery on me <laughs> yeah. that hadn't, hadn't went to college. Um, that being said, I, in my opinion, I think uh, the college degree has never been uh, less valuable than it is today. Very well said. Yeah. Very well said. And on that note, what is one piece of actionable advice you go back and give to your 18-year-old self? Hmm. Um, I don't know if this counts as one. But <laughs> I, like to, I like to talk if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, yeah, what I would tell my 18-year-old self is be exactly who you are meant to be. And keep in mind that that didn't say be exactly who you are because yeah. you're 18. Like, be exactly who you are meant to be. Yeah. Don't quit. Don't listen to 99% of the world. Because um, it's not because, you know, a lot of people make statements like that, and then they lead it up by things like, because 99% of the world is poor, or because 99% of the world is stupid, or they're idiots, or, or whatever. For me, the reason for that is really simple. 99% of the world doesn't know me. They don't know anything about me. Yeah. So how can they possibly, in fact, way over 99% probably, but uh, how can they possibly give me actionable, practical advice when they don't know me? They don't know what makes me tick. So I feel like we always in a society, we like to give each other advice and sound really smart and intelligent, but we have to be really careful doing that one-on-one -on -one because like it takes years, years to really get to know someone, who they are, what makes them tick, what's important to them those types of things. That's why I like to give kind of broad advice and always kind of leave context out there and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I'll throw in there, which this hopefully won't surprise you at this point in the interview, but serve others, solve problems, and good things will come. All right. Well, I'm going to flip the script and go to the other end. Um, what is one <laughs> thing you would want your 90-year-old self to say to you? To say to me specifically? Yep. Uh, I would want no my 90-year-old self to say to me, man, dag, boy, you left it all on the table. Like, you never sacrificed your character, never lost sight of what's important to you. Sorry. Uh, no, I can tell it hit you. Take your yeah. time, man. It's great stuff. Sorry. No, take your time. It's great stuff. That's it, really. I mean, that's it. Just, man, you left it all out there. I love it. I always tell people, like, you know, we only get one shot at this. And uh, I believe there's life for us after this, but I'll worry about that later. Like I'm, I'm trying to do me now. I'm trying to serve others, make an impact on the world. This is a crazy place. And uh, some of us are, uh, sorry. No, Dave, you're some great. Of, you're some great. of us are, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if we're put in the position. I don't know how that works exactly, but for whatever reason, I just feel like I'm just sitting here going, wow, I don't know how I got here, but like, responsibility, pretty good word, uh, obligation, pretty good word. And I don't run away from those things. Like I don't run away from those things. I think too many people do. Um, and I can't control what other people do and who other people are, but I can control who I am and what I do. And, uh, I mean, I'm 45. I don't know if I'll make it to 90. I don't know if I'll leave this earth tomorrow. I'm not real sure about that. But all I know is, and I know this sounds a little morbid, but this is another one of my weird sayings that uh, one of my friends calls them mensisms. Um, <laughs> I'm running at death 150 miles an hour, meaning I'm just like I'm just trying to leave it all at the table. Yeah. That's it. I love that, and and Dave, I can tell you, I can assure you, for my limited interaction, you are making an impact. You are doing it, and your legacy you're leaving behind is going to far. It's, it's going to extrapolate for decades. Yeah. I mean, honestly, yeah. truly. So you're doing a great job. You really, really are. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm proud to have you on the show. I'm sure Jack feels yeah, the same. I mean, thank you for that answer, and thank you for everything that you do, honestly. And that's exactly what we want in this community, and we really hope. And on that note, where can people get in touch with you? Where can we get the Tell Us Why listeners to reach out to you? Where can they get some, some in touch with Dave Menz, the Laundromat Millionaire? Um, yeah, the three best places to get a hold of me is on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active there, just under Dave Laundromat Millionaire Men's. Uh, same thing on Facebook. 
Um, and then my website, laundromatmillionaire.com. Um, and I always tell people, everybody calls it laundry mat millionaire because it's a laundry, <laughs> but laundromat is actually spelled laundromat. I so spelled it wrong when I was L-O- L-A-U-N-D-R- I definitely did. Oh, <laughs> M-A-N-T. <laughs> yeah. uh, or M-A-T, I'm sorry. Uh, so if people look for laundry mat, they're not going to find me. Laundromat millionaire. Is what you're gotcha. Gotcha. And guilty. Jack, guilty. Where, where can uh, the people find, <laughs> he's definitely guilty. Jack, where can the people find out, uh, tell us why online? Well, I mean, I think you have to check out the tell us why website. What is that? www.tellusywhypodcast.com. Absolutely. Um, gold there. Great stuff. All of Dave's info will be there. Um, and if you don't already follow us on social media, you can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, basically everything. Except TikTok because he still doesn't set it up. Whoa! So even better, in most Wednesdays we record live at the Studio no 21. On yeah, no one's on TikTok. The biggest website world. <laughs> Studio 21 Podcast Cafe in Salem. Dave, thank you again. Jack, what is the quote of the week? Uh, this one went a little off script, but uh, marriage is about the most expensive way for the average man to get laundry done. Burt Reynolds went funny this week. so <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. That's, That's it for today. Be sure to join us for next week's episode. Until next week. Bet on yourself. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.